the way that um, the truck for many years work made for work has been uh, beautifully defined previously. Basically, there's a bigger, smaller battery, possibly an additional power train, which uh, um, let's say power source, like for example, diesel or hydrogen or whatever, that, that pushes the truck uh, further when it's not on the network. Okay, so um, the question that we got for this research was um, what if you built a network, an ERS network in a corridor context, what would the potential traffic volumes be between Antwerp and Rotterdam? And are those sufficient to justify the building of the ERS network? Uh, what is the required is investment, or maybe the network is too small and you need to build more. Um, which route is the best between Antwerp and Rotterdam? And could the trucks be operated profitably in this corridor setting? Um, profitably both for the operator, ERS network operator, but also for trucking company. So the method. Uh, what we did is we basically we collect uh, the inputs, uh, which is which are the traffic data, the technology and operational assumptions, and we have some scenarios. We calculate uh, the result on the cost for users and uh, or on energy and investment, etc. And the RS operator for every single segment on uh, the road work, and then we sum them together, uh, and, and that allows us to switch on and off specific segments in the model uh, on, on the road network and basically come to the conclusions on, uh, on to answer the questions that we define. So let's talk about the inputs, and then we talk about uh, the conclusions afterwards. So as inputs, we use the technologies of eHighway, which uh, uh, which is the Katzner network just uh, just uh, mentioned by previous speakers. We use the Elon Road approach. Uh, we use the Alstom ground rail, and we use the electron uh, uh, Katzner uh, sorry uh, the electron ground induction solutions. So uh, we build. Uh, technology inputs. So we basically quantify these technologies. And uh, so we have the energy type for long distance and regional, regional means of the ER network. We have investment values for each of the technologies. We have an extensive uh, list of sources for each of those. So we have energy consumption uh, assumptions. And the previous, at the, at the end of the previous presentation, there was a question about two uh, kilotowers per kilometer. Well, that's in the range. Uh, uh, so, and also the operational and maintenance cost assumptions. So, uh, so, we also have inputs for energy price. Um, we basically looked at uh, the market data uh, at the pump, what, what you can buy. Uh, we have uh, the cost for ER, ERS electricity cost, that's the cost at which the uh, operator buys the electricity. He buys the, uh, the electricity at eight cents and, and sells at 22 cents. So it, this is optimized to recover the infrastructure use. Um, the way that the infrastructure looks like we have uh, generation and transmission, all of that falls outside of the scope of our research. But then, at the energy supply, the metering equipment and the technology specific road equipment that is already within the scope of uh, uh, we treat that in the cost. So, um, how much the question was just, just from up there oh, how much does it cost to build 
depending on the type of ERS, we have um, and the traffic volume, you have to supply a certain amount of electricity, uh, which means all the power connections need to be adequate for that volume. So we have um, traffic volume trucks a, a day of ERS traffic. You have the power per electrified kilometer requirement, half a megawatt, 1.2 up to 4 megawatt. And then you have, oh, I apologize. Uh, and then you have the, the cost to build per uh, technology solution. So you have here the catenary, ground conductive, electron ground conductive output, and in that solution. So those are the cost values in uh, millions of euros. Um, let's look at the place we're looking at so that the border area between between uh, Belgium and the Netherlands, so crossing the border between the port of uh, Rotterdam and the port of Antwerp. So what, how could you get there? What's, what, what are the trucking routes? So we look at three trucking routes. Route one, uh, here, uh, route two in the middle, sort of, and route three in the east. So, um, we model a number of scenarios, and this is a summary of scenarios. So this this is uh, more than hundred scenarios condensed into one table. So we basically we have the base scenario, we have single technology scenarios where every technology is just hundred percent, and then we have mixes as if they were adopted. So here is a summary. Uh, so let's talk about findings. Uh, it turns out that the eastern route is the best because it turns out that there's more users on that route that could potentially use it. So here is the, this this area is mostly empty and agriculture and, and, and less and less industry. And here to the east, turns out that this area is full of logistics centers, etc. So uh, there's a lot of uh, freight traffic which could be using the ERS. Uh, how much does it cost that's uh, to answer, depending on the technology and the best estimations of the technology providers, but also depending on the amount of uh, kilometers that have to be electrified. Uh, um, so uh, the optimal coverage, that's based on what the, uh, we got from interviews with the technology providers. Um, so we have somewhere from 122 to 119 ish uh, million euros to electrify this corridor uh, based, based on the different rules. So the more of the same. Also, it must be taken into account that none of the technology providers have built uh, over 100 kilometers. Or, or 200 kilometers or, or, of the road, so that so it's an estimation. Some of the estimations I trust more, some I some I trust less. I don't know. I can't verify. Neither can they. But I I I'm not saying that it's intentionally lying. It's just that no, nobody knew like to the exact euro. But those are the best estimations. So. Uh, if you operate it as an uh, a network operator, can you make money? That's that's the most important question. Is can you run it profitably? So here we have a, a, a an estimation of ERS operator profitability for the best route, so the eastern route, which is the most interesting to do it. And it turns out that you need only 5% of the trucks using the, the road uh, for the system operators to start making money. So, so it's, it's very good economics for the system operator and it confirms what, uh, what the smart freight center just said in the previous presentation. Yes, they can make money, they can make good money on it this as an operator. So, uh, of course, the, the break-even depends on the 
or on two main factors. So how, at what price do you sell that electricity and the technology adoption level. And the more you, you have better adoption, uh, the, the better it's like, so, so the higher your, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the, the more you earn basically as, as an operator. Um, so if, if the ERS users use diesel or, um, or other fuel, uh, so non-electricity, then that's worse for the operator because that's, that's an electricity that he didn't sell. That he didn't sell electricity that was used and replaced by the diesel. Um, so uh, in summary, all of scenarios that, that we calculated and everything. So uh, basically here we see what if in comparison to diesel. So diesel is zero, that's the baseline for us here. And if you switch to LNG, uh, LNG is very cheap based on the market data over the last year. So you would save 6%. Uh, uh, if you switch to uh, fuel cell vehicles, so hydrogen, you would save 75% more using this for the road. So but what we care, sorry, what we care about is the, the ERS part. So the, you can see that it, depending on the battery sizes, so with the smallest battery, with catenary truck, you would be saving the same 6.3% as you would be if you switched to um, LNG, but of course LNG is not a good solution, but you know. Uh, so similarly, the same result also goes for battery electric, uh, battery electric uh, trucks with ground conductive rails and also for uh, also, ground conductive rails and I was to say for electron inductive. So, so all the ER solutions are very close to each other. And, and of course, the, 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 the ones that are here, you might have the, the tall bar, so those are the ones that involve hydrogen. So, uh, if, we'll, if we look at two companies, two firms that, um, that might uh, consider doing this. And the one on the left uh, has, a, has an average cost curve and marginal cost curve, as we all uh, remember. And, and the one on the, on the left initially has the same cost curve and they're working in a fully comparative market. And uh, one, uh, and the one on the right decides, yes, I will switch to the area. So what happens, it, what it does, it, it, it basically tips down its, its average cost curve. So it ends up with shifting the market price from P0 to P1, and it ends up with an economically rational uh, uh, amount of uh, service that it provides. And of course, it ends up with an additional, an extra profit because it switched to ERA. Uh, but the firm that did not adopt ERA is uh, since the market uh, price shifted down, it basically ends up with a loss here. So uh, it, 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 it's sort of uh, either you do it or you end up working on your cost. Uh, so also for, there's, we see a potential for a flywheel effect. So what basically happens uh, as the adoption of ERS grows, it brings higher revenues for the network operator. He can reduce the energy price on the network or grow the network, which in turn provides incentive for more freight operators to switch to the network. And it goes in a loop, which it, 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 it's like a snowball, you can't stop it. Um, so, what is, we got the question what is the best PRS technology? Um, the answer is, I don't know. The economic analysis is not the tool to answer this question with, because, because we noticed that the power transfer capacity, the, 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 the power that the ERS network can supply to the truck, uh, uh, the, the longevity of, of the specific technology, 
vehicle equipment costs, other operational characteristics of of the technology, etc., are are the ones that will and should in, influence this choice. But but I can't tell you. I, I the thing that I know is that the best ERS technology is the one that will be built. <laughs> Thank you. Questions. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you, you take 5%. Take 5% is 5% when you mark, and is that 5% in a 24 hour day? Uh, no, so, so that's 5% of the trunk are. Five, so, so if you look at the traffic flow, that like these cars inside of the road, and you see the trunk falling, 5% of the trunk are falling. Right, because they are times of the day. That they are trucks, right? So, yeah, yeah, of course. So, it's that's fine for any development of the trucks. Yeah. In, in an average time of the day. Yeah. Um, so, we, we, we basically, what we in our model, we, we took the, the traffic flows of all Netherlands, we took all traffic flows of all the planters, and we like we put them together and we put it in and all on that important way to plan. We have very detailed first segment. They are all entry is like that road to so, yeah, all the capital that five percent really is not believable. No. <laughs> <laughs> that calculates you need something like four or five thousand trucks a day to pay for the wires. It's completely different. I mean, we have ten thousand trucks a day on that most of the traffic roads. So our calculation of the same number is about fifty percent. One of the reasons that I think you've got uh, some mistakes there, if you go back to your table of, uh, of charges as a function of power, way back uh, uh, that one, right? So cost per kilometer, if you want to go from 500 kilowatts per kilometer to four megawatts per kilometer, you have to put a really big substation at the side of the road. You have to pay for a big substation every kilometer along the road. It's got to do with four megawatts at, at 1,500 volts or 1,200 volts. It's a big fat substation and it's expensive. And it doesn't cost, you've got there millions of euros. You've gone from 0.96 at 500 kilowatts to 1.12, right? You've gone up by uh, 0.2 million, by 200,000 euros. And you're putting this big four megawatt substation every kilometer. It's just a, it really is not correct. Mm -hmm. So I think that some of the numbers need to be uh, a little bit of file correction. Uh, so if we need number, that's the beginning, that's the very start of the very first flow of the technology providers that we are looking how much will it cost to build. And the second is about, about the returns on investment. Um, there is, um, we have a, a key marker. So, so the operator buys the electricity at 8 cents and he, he sells it at 22. And, and that's how he recovers it. Uh, but uh, it's, it's I can agree with you that maybe this is doubt uh, that, that these figures can be done. And that's actually something that I mentioned uh, probably when I was talking about the difference. Yeah. If you go and ask the Siemens how much it costs to, yeah. to put a four megawatt substation every kilometer, it would be more than uh, 200,000 euros. And, and that's, that's just. The markup that we've got there is not unreasonable, not unlike the, what, what we use. Uh, and still, I think that five percent is We really need to look at that again, but I don't think it's believable. So, you, so you think that there's a problem with market problem? I have a couple of things. Yeah. <laughs> One, I'm very, very 